There are several times in your life when you have to make a decision through sheer will alone. It could be standing up to your parents, having you finally leave the nest. Maybe taking the first step in talking to someone you like, staring potential rejection right in your face. Or what about making next in the mind of video right after finishing up my biggest project so far? Oh. Resident Evil is a franchise that I really didn't have any attachment to until making my analytical video on Leon Scott Kennedy. But when I did go through that many RE games focusing on that character, I can firmly say that a fan is something that I am. Yet, even before the point of making YouTube videos, well, trying to make YouTube videos, there was always one game that I wanted to try out regardless of its older age, and that was Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Primary reason for wanting to get a hold of this was the titular character. I don't remember if it was his design or the knowledge on what function he had in the game, nor the fact that he stood out amongst his zombie brethren, but I do remember that it was Nemesis that caught my interest. So, when I saw that the third installment was getting a fully-fledged remake like the sequel did a year prior, my blood boiled in excitement. Woo! And so I made my mind up in deciding on making another video for a Resident Evil protagonist, this character being one of the two playable people who kickstarted off this series. An individual who's in the hearts of many gamers. Let's head into the mind of Jill Valentine. Very much like our police boy video, I will not look into every single game in the franchise that this character appears in, as her entire journey is so all over the place that it will not totally fit in. So, the focus will be on the original trilogy, more specifically Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 3. As already mentioned, the third game has gotten a remake, but here is the thing. Where RE2 Remake was pretty similar narrative-wise to its original counterpart, these two games not so much. Not only in what happens in the games, but also showing our heroine in completely different ways. So much, in fact, that it would be more proper in calling the remake a reimagination. Regardless, I will still use both of them, as I feel they both can work splendidly in showing how our young stars member grows into the highly appreciated character we have today. Plus, using remake footage will make this video look better. Oh my god, she's so beautiful! Whereas Leon didn't have that much of a background story before his journey began, this subject actually has something to look into. So, let's do just that. Around the year 1974 in America, Jill Valentine was born from a Japanese mother and a father who's from France. <laughs> Though it didn't take that long for the young girl to decide on what career path she'd choose, as in the early 90s, meaning in her late teens, she was already in the US military. And while that, in on itself, is pretty impressive, what is more so is the fact that she caught the attention of the Delta Force. Wanting to move up the ranks, Valentine went through a special operator training course, where she proved to be superb in lockpicking and bomb disposal. Which obviously is a skill that requires extreme delicacy and seriousness. <laughs> Through this test, the Delta Force also noted that Jill had a great sense of justice, was courageous, and was capable of acting during strenuous situations. However, with every positive, there is a negative, one being that they found our teenager to be quite impulsive, which could potentially lead to her making some less than clever decisions. Just saying. This kind gentleman is named Alberto Wesker, and it was this young man that went to recruit Jill when he saw just how well she did during her Delta Force training, to which she accepted. At least, that's according to the Wikipedia of Resident Evil, to which I have to say, I don't know where they got this information from. I've scoured the internet, I've checked game manuals, I've checked translations of Japanese interviews, but I can't find a single piece of evidence supporting this. We ain't found shit! But yeah, she still accepted whomever invited her. Making her part of Alpha Team as a B&E specialist in the Special Tactics and Rescue Service, or more famously known as STARS, was stationed in Raccoon Police Department in Raccoon City. Now, what this unit goes through before the first game, we simply do not have any knowledge of. According to the game manual of the original game, it hints at some potential earlier missions. Plus, according to Mikhail from RE3 Remake, he claims that her reputation is well deserved. Luckily, that stuff doesn't really matter. What does matter, however, is this. Resident Evil. Now this, this is a good video game. And what else is good to know is the fact that you can choose who you want to play as for the scenario. Our girl Jill Valentine, or of course. Gotcha! It's another. We'll of course focus on our beret wearing lady. Now, to set the scene. 
It is 1998. Jill is 23 years old, and with Alpha Team, they have gotten a mission in locating the missing Bravo Team in the Arklay Mountains during the 24th of July. And immediately as they get there, they find the destroyed chopper of their comrades, and also the remains of a friend. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. Immediately the action begins, and what seems to be dogs with several flesh wounds attack, causing the group to panic, losing a member already, Joseph Frost, and in terror, Brad Wickers, their helicopter pilot, flies away in fear, making the rest of Alpha Team run in the only direction that seems to have any protection in sight, the Spencer Mansion. As they enter this magnificent abode, they realize that Chris is missing, as they somehow got separated during their flight from the doggos. So the remaining teammates make the greatest horror decision one can decide on, splitting up. Alberto goes off doing his own thing, while the two others go on their quest to find the Boulder Destroyer. And this leads to one truly important moment in Jill's life. <laughs> Oh, hell no! Seeing the undead for the first time in one's life would definitely have some severe mental consequences, which we will eventually come back to, so please keep that in mind. But as Valentine came out of her daze, she runs off into the other room, immediately looking for some help from Barry. And it is indeed this chat of a man who is proving himself to be quite the friend, as not much later than this, Jill finds herself in another horrific situation, almost dying from a booby trap, only to be saved by Mr. Burton once again. Barry. That was a close one. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. What this shows us, aside from the fact that our heroine will be cute as F as a sandwich, <laughs> is that Jill is always fully accepting help from others. She's part of a team, and she can see the value in that. Something again we will return to later. What happens quite fast after this is the revelations of what happened to the other stars members. Finding the body of Forrest Speyer of Bravo Team, which quickly turned into a zombie. A wounded Enrico Marini who gets quickly shot before the protag can see the shooter. And finding the poisoned Richard Aiken, making our hero go through hell to find the vaccine to save him. Only to immediately lose him to a giant snake. Kill! <laughs> Yeah, it definitely wasn't just losing her friends left and right that may have caused some problems for Jill in the future, as she has to deal with some truly massive monsters. A huge spider, a giant shark, a mutated plant, and of course the already mentioned snake. Plus, she also ends up meeting Lisa Trevor, who after reading her files may have fueled Valentine's hatred towards Umbrella by a lot, considering her strong sense of justice. Though, while she believes that wrongdoers should be held to account for their actions, when her good friend Barry acts suspiciously, like having a secret conversation with someone unknown, quickly is trying to separate from her, or, of course, leaving Jill alone in a dank cave filled with monsters. Ha! Barry! Gay! Even after all that, when she disarmed him when he showed signs of attacking her, she gave his gun back when they were cornered by the insane Lisa. Showing us that while she does indeed hate individuals who act on their own selfish feelings, she still is willing to give people a second chance. Even if she didn't at this point know why her friend acted this way. Now, we know that she gave him his gun back, as if she didn't, he would have been killed. And Burton does indeed come back in the later game. That being said, Resident Evil 1, as previously mentioned, does indeed have two scenarios. So, when the playable character get to the underground laboratory, they find the other team member locked in a cell. Considering that it is canon that Chris finds Rebecca Chambers in a mansion, it makes things difficult in regard of canonicity when it comes to the smaller details. Therefore, let's just look at how our heroine reacts to what is happening. So, what does happen? Well, our group of heroes not only confronts their captain, they also get betrayed, as Wesker and Umbrella, who are working together, has taken Barry's family hostage, pushing him to do their bidding. Barry, go up on the ground and wait there. Barry. <laughs> you gotta love Barry. <laughs> And the Chad proves himself to be awesome again, choosing friendship, his team, over tyranny. Though, speaking of tyrants, you'll pay for that. Damn it! Jill and Barry together in hell. Huh? Ah, 
Damn it. fleeing for their lives with not only the massive monstrous monster of monsters behind them, but also the self-destruction sequence looming over their head, the remaining STARS members get out of the facility, immediately using a flare to contact their chopper pilot Brad. Salvation is finally descending. But before they could celebrate, the bioweapon confronts our heroes, only for Valentine to show that she truly is worth her explosion certificate. Where'd he go? Though she sadly couldn't do anything with the mansion's little chocolate box. So many explosions. <laughs> Still, returning to Raccoon City, Jill and her friends went to the chief of police, Brian Irons, to ask if they could open up an investigation on Umbrella, only to be denied, as most of the potential evidence blew up in the mountains. Plus, of course, the fact that he may or may not be working for them, but that's not that important. What is important, though, is what our group does between RE1 and 3. Barry rushed to take his family to Canada, hoping that they would be safe there. We don't really know where Rebecca went off to, but definitely out of the big city. And Chris left for Europe to investigate the cruel company. But let's be real, we know why he truly went there. Sorry, Ethan. No! What? Why? My sister, I'll make her your wife! And our main girl stayed in RC with her fellow Alpha team member Brad, working in getting more information on the conglomerate, hoping to find secret laboratories or facilities before joining Redfield abroad. But Chief Irons had her suspended off duty and put into house arrest with surveillance, as again, he may or may not be in Umbrella's pockets. Seriously, he really doesn't matter to Jill's story, though this leads us to the great Jill Valentine story, the third installment. Resident. Here it is, the big one. Now, where RE1 had a remake that was fully faithful to its original counterpart, the same can be said for Resident Evil 3, as I said earlier, and that brings us to something truly interesting. Whereas the PS1 game immediately starts off with action after a quick cutscene introducing us to the character, the 2020 version shows us how affected Jill was by her adventure in the mansion, drowning herself with sleeping pills, unable to keep the place tidy, and having terrible nightmares of the horrors she endured, showing us that she's even willing to pull the trigger to end it all. Truly an amazing way to start off the last escape. Of course, it is difficult to focus on her character as this massive unit shows up. I'm a stud. I'm boss. I don't take no shit from anyone. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> Attacked in her not-so-safe safe house, Valentine turns on her survival instinct and runs off, having this towering giant, which is screaming from its lungs, leaping after her, hunting for that... <laughs> Sprinting for her dear life, she meets up with one of the few people she can trust in this world, Brad Vickers. Together, they hurry on off from the city that has, almost quite out of the blue, been overrun with zombies, but just as quickly as they found each other. Door behind you, go! <laughs> The nightmare once again, taking over the life of our heroine. Most of her team, her family is dead, and it keeps happening, to the point where she is in denial. Don't think about it. We're gonna make a run for it. Come on, Jill. We know how this ends. No, I don't. Are we still a team? Always. Then do me a favor. Don't fuck up like I do. Go! Yeah. I'm sorry, Brad. He might have been a bit of a scaredy cat during the mansion incident, but in his final moments, giving his teammate a chance to live, Brad was a Chad. Though, as every air pilot dies, a chopper goes down with them. Ours. It's my turn, bitch! Having lost her way out, having lost her final friend in this doomed city, and having lost all hope, Jill Valentine feels nothing but alone, as she looks up at this creature of horror, almost accepting that this is the end. But then... Hey! Fuck face! This 
is Carlos Oliveira. And like a beautiful South American knight in shining armor, he goes in for the help that Jill needs. Quickly grabbing her, they run off to an underground subway area where he and his team have set up a safe zone for survivors. This sounds great, showing our heroine that there are still good people out there. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, UBCS for short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? And here we see what our protagonist will have to go through in this next adventure. Trusting people again. When she was younger, she wanted to join the force for the sake of helping civilians and working with like-minded people for the sake of justice. But after having lost so many of her friends to the greed of monsters, after having gone through betrayal from those she considered friends, all of whom are connected under the same umbrella, the very idea of working together with someone who is indeed a member of this horrifying conglomerate, even if they're part of a rescue team, is something Jill almost would immediately refuse. Only for her better self to shine over her hatred. We need help. My men cannot do this alone. All right. I'm in. But I am on their side, not yours. Oh, hey. It's cool. We all want the same thing. Thank you, Jill. That being said, she holds nothing but animosity for the members of the UBCS. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. Fuck you. All I can tell you is that it's somewhere in the area. You don't even know a building? That's helpful. Thanks, partner. I try. Not your partner. First thing to do to help the civilians is to get the subway car running. This differs between the two versions, but the conclusion is pretty much the same. Return the electricity to the trains. How to get this done doesn't really matter to our character's growth, but what does interest us is of course when she sees someone who needs help. Another member of Carlos's group whom she's willing to lend a hand to, as he- No, 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 no wait, please! No! What the fuck? He was infected. He might have been infected. Introducing Nikolai Zinoviev, nicknamed the Silver Wolf, who indeed is another member of the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, who just shot his teammate without any hesitation, as he claims that he would have turned. The Stars member tried to argue that there might have been a chance, distastefully asking if this is common practice in his group, only for him to challenge her on that being soft, having a lack of self-preservation, is not what is needed when hard decisions have to be made. We'll return to him later, as now we have to go back to Jill getting the power back on, after having to deal with... <laughs> After having gotten the train to work again, either through getting certain objects or getting the rail controller back on track, our hero is prepped to get back to the subway to get out of Raccoon City. But there is one thing we have to discuss when it comes to RE3. And yes, it is indeed... <laughs> Nemesis. Whereas Nikolai is the antagonist who challenges our hero on her beliefs, this meaty hunk is the one who challenges her on a physical level. Having only one mission, screaming out what it is looking for with only one word. <laughs> so to be fair, who could blame Nemesis for hunting down Jill? Look at that hill. When the sun hits that ridge just right, these hills sing. Don't want to be a creeper or anything, but this game has a weird fascination with her butt. Though to be fair, who could blame the cameraman for hunting down Jill? Look at that here. So yeah, not that much we can discuss when it comes to the tyrant of this game. Only thing worth mentioning is that as Valentine knows it is hunting only her, she is willing to go full sacrifice mode for innocent civilians, leading the hulking beast away. But for those unaware, believe me when I say that this dude does not give up on hunting our leading gal. Out of all the monsters we've had, he might not be the tallest, or the strongest, or the most dangerous, but he is without a doubt the most persistent in its pursuit. Determination, if you will. He might also be the fastest. I'll be back. The fuck? In the remake, which again differs from the original, our girl comes across a familiar face. 
Kendo, the man who strengthens Leon's conviction in RE2 Remake. While not anything real fascinating is to take of note here, I do like it when we see how differently she acts around those she seemingly trusts and have met before, showing us that she values her established friendships above so much more. Who also wants something so much more? I'm back. Having pushed the pursuer away once again, our characters can finally take the subway out of town. Now, here we actually have one of the biggest divergences between the two versions of the game. In the original, both Valentine and Oliveira leave together with everyone. But in the remake, our Latino has to stay behind with a colleague to find a Professor Nathaniel Bod. What I like about the 2020 version is Jill's reaction to the news that he has to stay behind, as she clearly has slowly started taking a liking to Carlos. This isn't the last ride out of town, right? It's all right, you're going ahead. I'm not gonna die on you and leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. Well, that was adorable. Even looking at each other as the train is moving. Delicious. And as the South American is moving towards the RPD, our girl is on her way out with the civilians and two members of the UBCS, Mikhail and Nikolai who ends up having an interesting conversation, showing us just how different the STARS member and the Russian is from one another, as the Umbrella operative clearly goes against everything Jill stands for. Funny how brainless zombies can ambush a platoon like that. Funny the gate was locked, don't you think? <laughs> So regardless of what version you're playing, it ends the same way, with the tyrant arriving at the doorstep of destiny. Or in the middle of a moving train in this case, killing every innocent bystander. In the remake, Sinoviev locks the cart door to separate himself from the others, going through with his life view of every man for himself, where in the OG, you actually get a choice in using the emergency brakes or jump out of the window of a rushing train. Uh, but while I don't particularly care for the lore decision, if you will, I highly doubt anyone in the right mind will take that leap, regardless of how brave one might be. But the one who shows the greatest cojones is Mikhail Viktor, who isn't sacrificing his life for the UBCS, but for us. SR. Surviving the crash, of course, Jill Valentine finds herself in a clock tower of Raccoon City, having lost the people she wanted to save, some she was working with, while also being betrayed by another madman. But before she can get a handle on the situation, the rabid T-type tyrant attacks once more. As I said, the lad is really persistent, but this time, Valentine is tired of being chased. This time, she will show Nemesis why she was part of the Alpha team of stars! <laughs> Yet no matter how badass our leading lady is, battling against the beast alone, or we call us, still leads to her being injected with a T-virus that causes her to fall unconscious. Never mind the creepy Russian in the background. But she is not alone in this city of the dead, as Oliveira lifts her up to the light and runs off to safety. Inside the clock tower in OG, to the hospital in RE. And immediately, our beautiful man-thing goes off to find a vaccine for his friend, telling the unconscious girl not to go to the light, as... Heaven is for pussies. Oh, boy. Jill. Oh, oh thank 
Thank God you're okay. We know how this ends. Shoot me, Joe. I can't. She's a real liar. It's the only way. Get a little trick with the guys. Where am I? Another nightmare consumes Jill. A nightmare that shows us that she not only considers Carlos a part of her team, but also that she is haunted by all of the horrors she endured in the mansion. Luckily she wakes up, only to hear that Carlos did indeed find a vaccine for her, and now is currently looking for more, as the government is willing to hold off with the bombing of Raccoon City if... And this is one big ass if... They get the serum. So, new plan! Go to the hidden laboratory, secure the cure, contact Uncle Sam for more time, take care of Philip. I'm so sorry, Philip. I mean, Nikolai. Grab Carlos, get to the chopper, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all of this to blow over. How is that for a plan? Ballsy motherfucker. <laughs> Who needs Operation Last Escape when we have Operation The Great Escape? Begin! Jill immediately finds her way down to the secret umbrella lab, which I guess is completely normal in the world of RE, is able to get a few hours out of the government, and is able to synthesize the vaccine. Damn, plan is being perfect. So far, so good. <laughs> and I usually forget about the important stuff when trying to be serious. Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> As our heroine is running from this daylight killer, someone else drops in to put a sickle and hammer into the plan. Nikolai. Nikolai. Hmm? Once more is reminding the young lady of the horrible people out there in the world, those motivated by greed above all else. So as he's taking the cure, he kicks Valentine down into the arena where she will have to face the nemesis. But as he's making his escape, believing Jill to be alone, what he doesn't seem to understand is that she is part of a team. Jill! Carlos? You're okay. And as a team, they kick the B.O.W.'s ass, then melting its remains down with what seems to be chemical acid, giving our heroine the opportunity in being the pursuer, running after and confronting Nikolai, finally on her terms. But like the entirety of the journey in Raccoon City, she can't really get away from the pain train, who has melted into a massive pile of rancid, horrid meat, whose sole purpose is still to find every last STARS members. But enough is enough. Telling Carlos to run after the Russian and the cure, showing that she truly trusts him in doing what needs to be done. And he himself trusts this once angry and borderline hateful woman, who once didn't trust him at all in fighting this thing alone. And by all that is holy, does she show us what it means to be the B&E specialist of the Alpha Stars unit? <laughs> So as Jill just did that impressive feat, how is our other massive pile of handsome hunky meat doing in his fight? Yeah. Well, at least the cure is still... No! Do you have any idea what you've just done? And as the timer of doomsday is slowly looming closer, Nikolai is ready to finish his secret mission in getting rid of anything that could save the crumbling Umbrella Corporation. But before he can finish off this burning sun, Carlos jumps into action, giving us a fight! between men. Shoot! Shoot him! She won't do I can't! I'll hit you! Do it! Doesn't have it in her! You have to! Which leads to a situation that Jill has been hoping would never happen, to the point of having nightmares about it. Pointing her gun in the direction of another teammate. Sure, in the past, as in Neverland, it was against zombies, but here, 
one mistake could lead to an even greater fall than before. It started out rough between Valentine and Oliveira, but through it all, the lonely girl recognized the young man for what he truly was, a good man. And while there absolutely are people like Zinoviev, who only cares about themselves and the money they can gain from other suffering, there will always be people out there, like Carlos, who will be there when his friends needs him the most. Carlos! Hey, I told you I couldn't leave you in a Carlos's world. That would just be too cruel. The two friends who are trusting each other stands over the one who trusts only himself, asking why he destroyed the cure, to which he claims that everything has a price tag, even burning down the world. But Jill shows him that such a fact is not true, as when he's trying to buy himself off Raccoon City, willing to give her the information on who hired him, she turns her back on that notion, showing Nikolai that he's wrong. I'll pay you whatever you want. You're a fool. You're a fool! If I die, you'll never find out the truth. I don't mind a little detective work. Taking the chopper with Carlos, our two heroes fly out of the city, and just in time, as they see the rocket that, once again, will put all evidence to ash. But from the ashes, like a phoenix, our hero's conviction is flaring up like never before, deciding that no matter what, she will bring Umbrella and those behind the suffering down. It's finally over. So long, Arcee. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. I would end them, once and for all. At a very young age, Jill Valentine knew exactly what she wanted to pursue for herself. A life where she could help others, being one of the good guys taking down the bad guys. But thrown into a situation that no amount of Delta Force training can prepare one for, her world turned into something truly dark. Seeing friends die left and right, having to shoot her own teammates who have turned into something gruesome, being betrayed by those she once thought she could trust, and seeing what one would consider a bad guy by first glance, only to learn that they could be a victim themselves. All of this turning this positive and trusting teammate to a negative, cynical person who would second-guess any stranger's intention. But just as it was a terrifying situation that changed her like this, another one showed her that there truly is good in this world. While not originally wanting to work with Mikhail's Umbrella team, only joining forces to help the civilians, she learned that while there will be people who betray and hurt others out there, individuals like Carlos would be there to stop them. And no matter how great the enemy is, no matter how horrifying the situation can get, if you are determined to take a leap of faith, trust can and will be earned. Making the future truly be something worth fighting for. And that is the mind of Jill Valentine. Though as we know of the future Resident Evil games, they will never truly be able to take down Umbrella, as the true mastermind, the true villain, always gets away. Hi there! I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe, all that sort of jazz. Also, write a comment in what you enjoyed the most, what you enjoyed the least, so that I can improve. One, I would really like to uh, give a shout out to the two artists who made some awesome uh, art for this video. Obviously, the, uh, one artist doing the two pieces of the Jill sandwich and the Carlos taco. The other artist making the wholesome nemesis. You can find the link in the description to their uh, uh, social media and where you can see their awesome art. If you're interested, I will be streaming right after this premiere thing, this video, uh, my first ever playthrough of Resident Evil 6. I've never tried it before, so that's going to be interesting. So if you want to see that, link in the description. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna also jump on my next uh, project as quickly as possible, so we don't have to wait two years. Shit!